It's good to be in the house of the Lord. We could be a million other places. We could be in a million other places this morning. Think about all the places, all the Sunday mornings you've spent not serving the Lord. Praise the Lord. He's brought us a long way, hadn't he? He's brought us a long way. I've been blessed to be in church my whole life. Now, that doesn't mean I've been serving God my whole life. Amen. Just because you're in a cross-preaching church doesn't mean you're serving the Lord. And we're going to talk about that this morning a little bit. We're going to talk about being in a place sometimes. You know, you get in a place. You're just going through the motions. You just don't know what to do. You know, you, you, you thought you're trusting the Lord. You, you think you're trusting the Lord, but you're not sure what's going on. You're, you're not sure uh, why you're failing in your life. But there's an answer for that. It's Jesus Christ and him crucified. And we say that a lot, but that's as simple as it is. Now, that really is a fight to stay. <clears throat> it's a fight to stay in this faith. But that's what it is. It's faith. As long as you have faith, everything's going to be okay and God's going to pull you through it. it. When we start trying to do stuff by ourselves, like Brother Chris said earlier, when we start trying to do things by ourselves and we think, you know, we'll just take care of this situation, well, God's got other plans. He's going to show you you can't take care of that situation. Let me give you an example. And some people might think this is foolish or dumb I, I, you know it worked for me you know for years I I tried to lose weight you know work out run all that good stuff but for some reason it's just so hard to eat healthy can I get an amen? amen it's so hard you, you know you've eaten a salad oh, that's all you, you've eaten all day you maybe ate some good protein for for breakfast but for dinner you just order a pizza because you're so hungry you order a large pizza and you tear it all up by yourself and you tell yourself, well, I'll just start tomorrow. Then six months go by and you've gained 30 pounds. It's past tomorrow, amen. Well, you know, ever since I've been trusting in the Lord and not myself to help me get in better shape, I'm not saying I'm the biggest guy around because I'm not. You know, I'm not just some obese, out-of-shape guy, but I think I could be in better shape. And my point in bringing this to y'all this morning is... When I started trusting in the Lord, you might think it sounds silly, but I, I was thinking I could just do this by myself. It never ran through my mind that even the Lord will help you with your physical body, with your physical problems. All you've got to do is trust in Him. Every time I get a craving of something that's not healthy, I say, Lord, for years I would just do my own thing and just try to think about eating healthy and then I'd go for a run when I got that craving. But now, by the finished work of Christ, you can even lose weight, praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. And that's the truth. I just wanted to share that with you all before we got started because that's how powerful the Lord is, amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to be in Hebrews this morning, chapter 11. That's where we're starting Chapter 11, verse 24. I see the house is more filled up than last Sunday. You must have heard what I said. If you weren't here, then that's okay. At least you're here today. You don't have to know what I said. But it wasn't nothing mean. It's just that the people are called to get, be gathered together no matter where the preacher's at. Amen? Because we've got several preachers here that can preach the word in the context of the truth. And I thank God for that. You know, I thank God for, and we're praying for more. You know, it's always good to have ministers. And one day, the ministers of this house that are taking this message in right now are going to go out and start their own work. Amen. That's what the Lord's will is for everybody. Now, maybe not for some. Not everybody's called to go plant a church. But ministers, preachers are going to preach. Amen. I learned that from the time I was 12 when I found out I was called to preach. Before I got in the pulpit, I was preaching to people. You know, early in my life, I had a desire to just share God's Word. And before I understood this message, you know, it never the attempts, they always, they never worked out. They were for a season. In my heart, I, I wanted to serve God. In my heart, I, I wanted to share the Word of God. But just after a little while, it kind of went away, you know. But in this message, you never stop 
you never want to stop sharing it to anybody because it, if it changes your life, you want everybody else to hear it. You want everybody else to get a piece of it. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Well, we're going to start in verse 24 of chapter 11 of Hebrews. If you're there, say amen. 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 I've given you all enough time, I guess, two or three minutes to get there. Verse 24 says, <clears throat> By faith, Moses when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter, choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season, esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he hath respect unto the recompense of the reward. By faith he forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible." Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch him. By faith they passed through the Red Sea, as by dry land where the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. And we're going to pray this morning, but I just wanted to read the text to you I'll be coming out of. We're going to be in a few different books, but this is where we're starting, and let's pray this morning. Lord, I'm asking you to come down this morning. Let your spirit fall even more, Lord. Let the rain fall than it, more than it already has, Lord. We thank you for being here with us and letting us abide in your presence, Lord. It seems like, it seems like you're just so abundant with that, Lord. Every time we want to be in your presence, you're right there, Lord. Every time we turn around, you're right there, Lord. And I ask you to send the teacher and send the preacher here this morning, Lord. Teach through me and preach through me, Lord. Minister to your people what you want me to say. <clears throat> Lord, anoint me to, to teach your word and anoint them to have ears to hear this morning. Lord, I ask that you're with us the rest of this service. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Praise, the Lord. Praise the Lord. We're going to go back through verse 24. I just Like I just said, I just wanted to go through a, a, just a reading of all that. But we're going to take it kind of verse by verse for a little bit. Verse 24 says, by faith, you notice that? By faith. Through, all, through this 11th chapter of Hebrews is all about faith. All about faith. That's what God's all about. He's about nothing else. That's how we connect to God is by our faith. That's been on my heart lately. <clears throat> the connection we have to God is by our faith alone. We can't get to God doing any other thing. We've seen things in the Bible play out, people trying to get to God in other ways. And you've even seen it in your own life, and I've seen it in mine. We can't work this thing out with God without faith. We can't serve God without proper faith in his blood. By faith, Moses, when he was come to years, refused to be called the son of Pharaoh's daughter choosing rather to suffer affliction with the people of God than to enjoy the pleasures of sin for a season. Praise the Lord. Have you found yourself in that place before in your life? We say this all the time. Sin is but pleasurable for only a season. Only a season. God's not calling us to push him off and say, God, we'll... we'll We'll give you the later years of our life, but, but for, for now, let us have fun. You know, we're going to have fun, but in case anything goes wrong, you'll always be there, right? That's how, have you ever found yourself in a place like that? I have. Lord, I'm, Lord I think uh, <clears throat> you might not even be saying this to him. You might just be thinking it, and God, God knows everything, amen? But you ever pushed him? away with your heart and with your thoughts. You didn't even know you were doing it. You know, sometimes it's because of this fleshly body we still live in. That's the only answer that, that, that we have for it. We, we push God away and we say, you know, Lord, just let me live my life for now. And when I'm married and have kids and have a stable job, then I'll come back to you. And then I'll serve you then because it'll be easier to serve you. No, you got it all wrong. All that stuff comes from the blood of Jesus. If you want a stable job, if you want a good marriage, if you want to raise your kids right, that's all through the blood of Jesus. It's not you doing it and then God coming in and approving of what you did because that's never going to work. God is not going to approve of anything we've done because all of our works are filthy rags. Unless we're glorifying God... Because 
He uses us so that he can be glorified through us. How many of you know everything God does is so that he can be glorified? Everything the Lord does is so that he can be glorified in this world, but it's all a root of, from a root of love and from a heart of love because God is love. And as he's glorified, others will see him and see in his word where he died for them for their sins so they wouldn't have to live a miserable life anymore and they'll become born-again Christians too. And God is glorified through that, amen? <clears throat> he's glorified through people being born again and people coming back to the finished work. That's why we preach this gospel. That's why we give out Bibles to inmates. Praise the Lord. That's why we do everything that we do because God is supposed to be glorified in all of our actions. Amen. But you might find yourself sometimes in a, in a season where sin is pleasurable, like I said before. Well, listen to this. Sin is very powerful. Like I'm sure you all know that. You know, the sin is so powerful, it will, it will destroy you. The power of sin is greater, listen to this, the power of sin is greater than your willpower, than my willpower. The power of sin is greater than anything that we can do by ourselves. Praise the Lord. You find yourself trying to serve God, but you can't do it by yourself. You can't do it by yourself. I'm telling you, the only way to serve God the, the one true God is by faith in what his son did for us at the cross. And you might be sitting here today, you might be listening and saying, why do you keep saying that so much? Well, why don't you try to do it any other way but that? Because it won't work. Why would you try? Just trust what I'm saying this morning. If you find yourself in a place going through the motions, you've been in church for years, you might even been in a cross preaching church your whole life like me. You might even have been in this church for five, ten plus years. It doesn't matter. If you find yourself in a place constantly saying, Lord, I, when you leave the service or during the service or when you get home saying, Lord, I, I, I understand that it's by faith in the cross alone, but if you find yourself in that place and you just can't serve God, just be still. Be still. You might say, well, how do you just be still? Well, the devil's going to come and push you up against the wall and tell you you cannot serve God. That's what he does. Even after you hear this message, what crushed the devil's head, he's not going to give up in your life. He'll never give up trying to destroy you. That's why Satan is going to burn in the lake of fire because he's that evil, amen? He's more powerful than your willpower. The power of sin is more powerful than your willpower. Jesus crossed the devil's head at Calvary, but if you don't have faith in Calvary, then guess what? His head ain't crushed for you. The devil's head isn't crushed for those that doesn't have faith in Calvary. He can still control your life if you're not saved. Even if you are saved, he'll push your back up against the wall. Even if you're filled with the Holy Ghost, know this message. There'll be times the devil will have you up against the wall and you won't know what to do. But then God comes in and says, just be still. Just be still and know who I am. Know who I am. Who is, Jesus? Who is God? He, he's love. He gave his son for you. When you find yourself pushed up against the wall like that, just be still. Listen to the words I'm saying. This is the message you've been wanting. This is the message you've been needing. This is what's going to turn your life around. I went through a time in my life when I knew this message and I knew what was right, but I also knew what my flesh wanted. I also knew what I desired my own self what I wanted for my future, where I wanted to go to college, what I wanted to be. I wanted to be a successful millionaire. They asked us what we wanted to be at school. These college reps would come by and say, what do you want to do with your life? What do you want to do with your life? Last year, June, my junior year, they'd always come around and say this, and I'd say, man, I'm going to be a billionaire. That's who I'm going to be. I'm going to be a billionaire. And they'd just say, good luck with that. Good luck with that. Amen. It's hard to be a billionaire in this life, but it's not hard to serve Jesus. It's not hard to serve Jesus. It is a fight. It won't always be easy, easy, but it's not hard. It's easier than being a billionaire. I guarantee that. You don't want to be a billionaire. But as I found myself in that place, just 
just knowing the right thing, knowing what I should do, but doing something else, where Paul found himself in Romans chapter 7, just <clears throat> knowing what to do, not doing the things that I want to do. I wanted to serve God, but at the same time, I wanted my life over here. I wanted to serve myself. I would have never said that, but that's how it is. That's how your actions speak. Did you know that? Your actions speak louder than words. That's, that's the truth. People say that, but that's actually true. And, and there for a while, it was, it was constant just agony in my spirit. It was my flesh warring after my spirit. Have you ever been there? Have you ever, you want to get out of it so quick, it's even more miserable than being unsaved. Because you know the truth that's changed your life. Now, you're still going to heaven, right? But you're going to be, it's going to be miserable in your heart. You would rather not even known so you wouldn't be any, in any conviction. But as I found myself in that place, <clears throat> I was just uncertain about what to do. I knew the right thing, and, but I knew what I wanted, but I didn't know what I should do. And you can't compromise the two because sin will suck you in. Sin will destroy your life. You can't just pity, pity patter with sin. That don't work. That does not work. If you try to play church and sin and have a sinful life, the devil's going to crush you. He's going to beat you down. And you're going to find yourself at a place where all that you can do is cry out to God. And that's where I found myself. Right back there in that sound booth, the Lord told me to just follow Him. Those sweet, simple words, just follow me. And I knew what to do from then on. It ain't about us. It ain't about ourselves. It ain't about what we can do because we can't do nothing without God. You know that song, you can't even walk without holding his hand? Well, once you, once you hear this message, you know that's true. Once you hear this message, there'll be a tug on your heart forever unless you accept it or reject it. And if you reject it, you're going off into a life of miserable sin, constant warring at the, the flesh after the spirit. I talked to one of my friends the other day. One of, the, one of my friends that we have that shares this faith, you know, they're going through a tough time, but I'm, I told them what I'm telling you. Just be still and know that he is God. Just be still. I told her the exact same thing that I'm telling you because it's what works. You can't just say, just pray. Just read your word. All those things are good, and we should all be doing those, and we should have a desire to do those things, but that is not what's going to get you through this fight. Your faith is what's going to get you through this fight with God, with, with yourself. It's not a fight with God, but you are in God. You're in Christ Jesus, and that's the only thing that can get us through that. Amen. But the sin, sin is so powerful, it will destroy you. Like I said before, just mark your Bible right here. Make sure you, you put your finger, your hand in it or something because we're going to turn right back to it here in a minute. But turn to Ephesians chapter 2, if you would, with me. Verse 1. <clears throat> and I like this bookmark. Elise made it for me. She's not in here, but it's so sweet. I got another one too. I'm using three this morning. That ought to let you know how many places we're going to go. Just about three. Don't get scared. I know your fingers get a little tired, but try being a preacher, son. You know, all the time flipping through the Bible, amen. Praise the Lord for being a preacher, son. I appreciate that. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Praise the Lord. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins... Listen to this verse. <clears throat> this is how powerful sin is. I'm going to show you something you might not have ever seen before. Wherein in time past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air. Listen to this part. The spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience. That just told you clear as day. If you're a child of disobedience, before we were saved, the devil literally worked in you. 
The, his spirit, the spirit literally worked in you. That evil spirit, it was working in you. That's how powerful that sin bondage is. That's how powerful he can beat you down. That's how powerful, though, that the blood of Jesus is, that it can crush that. It can pull you completely out of that. Plumb up on out of there. Amen. As we say in Texas, plumb up on out of there. We, aren't you glad that Jesus just reached down in our sinful mess, our sinful just, just mess, and pulled us out of there? Clean. I, I saw something. I don't remember. It's been a couple months. Somebody said, aren't you glad that uh, Jesus just is using the things of our old life, uh, turn them in, in, into good things, something about before we were saved? That's not true. God makes you a whole new creation. There's nothing in your past life that's coming with you when you're transformed by the renewing of your mind. There's, no, there's nothing that comes with you from your old man but your flesh is always going to be there. But you're a completely new creation in Christ. That sounds good, doesn't it? Completely new creature. You're a creature. You're a new creature, amen? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. But that's how powerful that the devil is before you're saved. But we're going to keep reading and hear some good news <clears throat> through verse 6. Verse 3 says, Among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lust of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of our flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, have quickened us together with Christ. By grace you are saved. Verse 6 says, And have raised us up together and made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus. In Christ Jesus. Amen. It doesn't matter what you went through in your, before you were saved. It might still haunt you sometimes. Because guess what? It, it haunts me sometimes. It's always going to haunt you a little bit. But as we continue to serve Christ, as we continue to get closer to God, we get farther away from the darkness. As you come into more light, the darkness is pushed away. Amen. As you get closer to the Lord, the devil gets farther away. Like I said, he's always going to show up to harass you. He's always going to be there, but Jesus is in your heart now. You're, in, you're living in Christ Jesus. Amen. All right, I told you all to mark. Now just flip right back over to... Hebrews, if you would, praise the Lord. Hebrews 11, we're going to read verse 26. <clears throat> verse 26 reads, Esteeming the reproach of Christ greater riches than the treasures in Egypt, for he hath respect unto the recompense of the reward. Romans 8.18 8, says, For I reckon that the sufferings in this present time are not worthy to be compared with the glory which shall be revealed in us. Amen. Amen. We're going to suffer sometimes in this world. We're going to suffer with Christ like the Bible tells us. But guess what? We're going to have a reward. We're going to have a reward. And our reward now, before we get to heaven, is to be with Christ. That abundant life, more abundant life, is more of Jesus. I say that every time I preach because it's so true. Abundant life isn't more riches in this world, more cars. He'll give you, he'll give you what you need, and he'll give you those things in life. But abundant life, to a real, to a true believer, is more of Jesus. Because once you, once you grab a hold of Jesus, you can't let him go. Once you grab a hold of his love, man, I never want to let Jesus go. Things can always happen. People can, everybody on this earth can be deceived. Amen. Everybody can be caught off in deception. But once you get a hold of Jesus, you're going to want more of him. Once you truly grasp a hold of him and what he's done for you, you're going to just want more of that truth. Every day you're going to want more of the truth. Praise the Lord. Amen. Verse 27. By faith Moses forsook Egypt, not fearing the wrath of the king, for he endured as seeing him who is invisible. 
Through faith he kept the Passover and the sprinkling of blood, lest he that destroyed the firstborn should touch them. By faith, that's three times in a row, the scriptures start, Paul writes and says, by faith. That ought to let you know something. If they needed faith in the Old Testament, guess who needs it now? We have an even better covenant than they had. They were under the old covenant. We have Christ and him crucified. Now we have the blood of Jesus, that lamb. They had lambs and goats and everything else, but we have Jesus. We have the lamb of God. And think about that. We got to have faith. We got to have faith. Without faith, we're nothing. We're just like everybody else running around in the world. Crazy. Amen. Because the world is crazy. Praise the Lord. By faith, verse 29, they passed through the Red Sea as by dry land, which the Egyptians are saying to do were drowned. Praise the Lord. These three verses right here, and really the whole but really the whole chapter eleven of Hebrews is, is a a representation of the Christian walk for God. It's our walk for the Lord. Everything we do is by faith. You know, everything that we do is for God is on a spiritual level. Whether it's preaching, guess what? We're given the truth and people get saved. That's spiritual. Anything else, you know, people say all the time, well, I, I play football for God. I play basketball for God. I play for Christ. I play baseball for God. No, you don't. You don't play anything for God. Unless you're out there giving, giving the truth on the field, you know, you're not playing a sport for God. I don't, that might offend somebody this morning listening or here, but you know, it's just the truth. How do you play a sport for God? You can't because he don't care about sports. Sports are great. Basketball is great. I love basketball. But me going up and dribbling down the court and shooting a layup and making it and winning the game, God don't care about that. He's not even looking at that. Now, if I get whacked and fouled and thrown into the bleachers and I get up and say, man, Jesus loves you. He died for you to that dude that did it to me and he gets saved right there. Guess what? I guess you can call that playing basketball for God. But that's the only time because God don't care about things of this world. Because that's what they are, things of this world. And guess who runs this world? The devil. Guess who runs sports? Guess who runs music? Guess who runs Hollywood? Satan. Guess who runs everything but the preaching of the cross? Satan. Guess who's speaking into the ears of almost every preacher? Yeah, I said it. Every preacher, almost every, 99.9% .9 of churches today are going to get up and say something that doesn't mean anything to the people that are listening, that can't hit, help the people that are in bondage. 99.9% .9 of the church today, that, they're going to get up and just tell them to read their Bibles. You're going to tell them to give to the church, to go do this or that. And guess what? That's just the... The, the churches that claim to be Christian. Think about all the other churches out there like the Catholic churches, the Mormon churches, all those people. Amen, sister. Works don't save you. Sometimes we try, to, we try to get in the way of God. That's where I find myself failing most of the time. And I think that's the that's same thing with y'all. I don't, I, don't, I don't know your personal struggle, but I know that law can get in the way very easily. Grace versus law, amen. Don't forget to tune in tonight and listen to Brother Lauren preaching down at Baton Rouge Family Worship Center, Grace versus Law, part three of four. Sorry, I thought I'd just plug him real quick. Then he praised the Lord. Well, like I was saying, we, we get in the way of God so much. I find myself getting in the way of God. It's so simple to do. Like I was mentioning before I even started, just thinking you can do something by yourself. Guess what? That's... That's telling God his sacrifice wasn't enough. And that's hard to hear, isn't it? Isn't it hard to hear? Especially if you're going through something like that this morning. 
I'm sorry to tell you, but if you're trying to work out your own deliverance for something in your life, you're pushing the sacrifice of God out of your life. In a way, you're telling God that blood's not enough. I, I think I need to get involved in this. Well, guess what? The blood is enough, and you can never change anything that's going on in your life. You can never change anything. You'll never be able to quit smoking without God. The people that have quit smoking, it, that, that it get in AA, it quit drinking and all this, guess what? I'm not too convinced that they don't go back to drinking or they don't have a couple more sips in their life. We don't know people's lives. If people in this message can be deceived, think about the people that aren't even saved. Now, people, I, I do believe there has been people that has legitimately quit drugs through programs like that. But guess what? It's so much easier if you just come to Christ. If you just come to Jesus, you'll put the cigarette down today. You'll put the beer down today. The drugs, you'll put them down today. The pornography, you'll put them down today. People struggle. The stru the st people struggle with, with real sin problems. You know, some people just think because we're in a cross-preaching church, people don't struggle. Guess what? We struggle. I struggle. I struggle more than all y'all put together. Praise the Lord. Sometimes, you know, I'm convinced that I do. But that's just because of our flesh. Amen? Well, let me tell you some some news this morning. Let me remind you of something. We'll never get rid of this flesh, but there's a good side of that until we see Jesus. When we see Jesus, we'll be absolutely, totally changed. Amen. No more sin, no more hurt, no more pain. I'm ready to go. Sometimes we just find ourselves so beat up over the things of the world. You know, I lost a friend I guess it's been a couple months ago. I lost a friend I just had just for a short time in my life. And I found myself so beat up over it. So beat up that it just changed, you know, just changed me for a minute. Just for, just for a little while, it got me off track. It got me just off track. But then I realized what, what made me lose that friend. It's because of my faith is different from whatever they believe. And my faith is the most important thing in this life. Your faith is the most important thing in your life. It doesn't matter who comes into your life or who goes out of your life because Jesus, as long as you have faith, will always be in your life. And you'll always be abiding in Him. Amen. Sometimes we, we, get, we take losses and they hit hard. We've had friends in this ministry we've met some of dad's closest friends just now they're preaching off the wall stuff. Something, stuff that ain't even in this book, ain't even in the Jesus book, amen. And it hurts sometimes to know because you built a bond with, with that person. You built a bond in this message with that person and they just looked away. It's that simple. I'm warning you this morning just for a couple minutes. I'm going to warn you this morning. You need to stay ready, stay, stay fit in this faith. You got to fight. Until you really start to serve God through faith in his shed blood, you won't know what I'm talking about, but it is a fight. You'll find yourself, like I said, against the wall, but Jesus, his grace is sufficient. His grace is sufficient. It's powerful. Amen. More powerful than anything. His love is so powerful, more powerful than anything in the world. Amen. Praise the Lord. But I read you these couple scriptures because I wanted you to know that Moses had it all. He was the prince of Egypt. He had everything. Pharaoh's daughter's kid. He had all the riches you could ask for. I'm sure... There for a, when he was first born, man, he had the coolest baby shower. He had the coolest baby crib. Probably had gold hanging on it. Man, his baby, his diapers had gold on them. I'm sure. He was he was royalty in Egypt. 
Just think about that. He forsook all of that to suffer with God's people. And we can't even forsake our own fleshly desires sometime. But guess who we have today? Jesus. Guess what he did? He died for us to make it that much easier on us. We might have to suffer a little bit in this world, but it's not worthy. It's not worthy. Today is your day to start serving the Lord. And if you're not saved, it's your day to come to Christ. Because everything in the world, you might mess with it for a year's For one, two, three, however many years you mess with it. But like I said before I started, you will find yourself in a place where you don't know what to do. You're so miserable and nothing is helping. The the tobacco won't help no more. The weed won't help. The alcohol won't help. Getting new friends won't help. Marrying somebody ever, having 80, 80 wives won't help. Whatever your deal is. It won't help. The only thing that will help you is Jesus Christ and Him crucified. That's why you should choose today to start living for God. Not tomorrow, because you're just going to keep pushing the date back. You're just going to keep pushing it back. Uh, I'll start tomorrow. I, I, I got to go do a couple things. I got to go drink with drink tonight. I got to go out tonight. I got to go have fun tonight. Who's ever been there? Just pushing it off until the next day. Well, I promise you it's worth it if you start serving Him today. If you start serving Jesus today. Turn with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 6. Hope y'all didn't think I was quitting right then. (laughs) Amen. (laughs) Yeah. You're right about that. You know, somebody told me not too long ago so does preaching just run in your family or no preaching don't run in the family you're called to preach by the lord you're called to preach by god i don't i can't just get up here just because i've listened to my dad speak over the years mom you listen to dad you want to come up here and preach brother reno I didn't mean to call y'all out, but it's, I'm giving an example. Anybody, you know, everybody's not called to preach. But guess what? That's about the only thing I can do. Y'all are called to way more than, listen to this, the people, the body of Christ, everybody puts the preaching position like it's the most important. That's not, they, they share the gospel. Preachers preach the gospel and teach the gospel. But everybody is called to do something. Everybody is called. You need to find your calling, amen? You got to find, just because we're Christians doesn't make us better than anybody. And just because I'm a preacher doesn't make me better than anybody. I think preachers struggle more than anybody. Praise, amen, tempted more. Amen, Brother Reno. You know, I didn't want to be a preacher when I, when I was first called. You know, I, it, it excited me, but I thought about, well, I can't do this. You, you, should, you ought to hear me speak about something that ain't about God. I'm the worst speaker in the world. I'll get up here and st- st- stutter all day. You get me up here talking about some fundraiser or doing the announcements, I really don't think I'm good at that. <laughs> Praise the Lord. But I love to share the Word of God. And a preacher's going to preach, amen. Praise the Lord. <clears throat> Got a little sidetracked there, but thanks, Sister Ferdane. You threw me off. I'm, I'm kidding. Amen. Praise the Lord for Sister Ferdane and for everybody in here. Praise the Lord. I love you all so much. I couldn't ask for a better church family. I'm not trying to get off track this morning, but I'm going to miss you all when I go to Baton Rouge. I'm going to come back and visit, though, and you all better be ready for some more preaching. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Second Corinthians chapter 6, verse 1. Today is the day of your salvation. And we're going to read about that. Chapter 6, verse 1. We then, as workers together with him, beseech you also that you receive not the grace of God in vain. For he saith, I have heard you in a time accepted, and in the day of salvation have I secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Now is the day of salvation. Amen. Today is your day. It's, it's simply put like that. 
You can wait till tomorrow, but you're just going to keep pushing it back and keep pushing it back. Praise the Lord. Today is not only your day to be saved, and today is not only your day to be edified and to learn how to start living for God, but it's your day to be filled with the Holy Ghost if you hadn't yet. Boom. If you hadn't been filled with the Holy Spirit, don't give up. Don't give up. He's going to fill you. I feel like I'll preach over here because y'all aren't being loud enough. He's going to fill you. He's going to fill you. If you want it, he'll fill you. You might think to yourself, man, I'm just, I'm done asking. I've known people like that. They wanted it so bad. They wanted it so bad and never got, never got it, so they gave up. And now they're off doing God knows what on Sunday morning. That breaks my heart. That breaks my heart. You know why? Because God is going to fill them if they want it. If they would have just kept. That's what we do in this life. We keep on keeping on. We're going to go through some stuff. But we've got to keep the faith and we've got to keep believing. And if today is your day, if today you have not been filled, you have not been saved, today is the day. Look no further. Ask God today. Praise God. Ask God today. If you're living in sin and want to be free, be free. Be free. There's not. There's nothing you can do to be free besides give it to God. Put your faith in Christ, and He will make you free. He'll make you totally, absolutely, completely free from that sin this morning. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Today is the day. Don't wait any longer. We're going to keep reading. In verse 3, and I'm going to show you something. Giving no offense in anything that the ministry be not blamed. Verse 4, but in all things approving ourselves as the ministers of God. In much patience, in afflictions, in necessities, in distresses. And you, it, it keeps going through the verses talking about all these things that we need to approve ourselves by. You know, there's patience, the Holy Ghost, kindness, long-suffering, Uh, knowledge, all that kind of stuff. But I want to skip down to verse 7 and read that. Verse 7 tells us how we approve ourselves as the ministers of God. By the word of truth, by the power of God, by the armor of righteousness on the right hand, on the left. I think we need to read that one more time. By the word of truth... And by the power of God. Isn't it kind of funny how those two things are right beside each other? Because the word of truth has to be in the context of the power of God. And the Bible tells us in 1 Corinthians 1.30, I believe, that the preaching of the cross is the power of God. The word of truth has to be preached and taught through the cross of Christ. It can be in no other... If you read it in any other context, it won't do a thing for you. That's why people are out there today in these churches across the world or wherever they are. You don't even have to be in a church. If you're trying to read your Bible and trying to live for God on your own, and you're not going to understand it. You ever hear somebody say, I try to read my Bible, I just can't understand it. That's why I got the New King James Version, and that's fine. If you need that Bible to help you understand it, just don't read the NIV Bible. Amen. That takes scriptures out about Jesus dying for us. I'm telling you right now, you don't need to read the NIV Bible. Sorry. If you have an NIV Bible, if you, whoever gave it to you, give it back. I'm just kidding. You, but I'm going to be honest with you. The only type of Bible is King James Version. The new King James Version doesn't change much, just the... People say it changes the vowels, these. I wouldn't know. I stick to my King James because I feel like everything else is just milked down. And I've read the other part of the other Bibles, and it milks stuff down, and it takes scriptures completely out about about the death of Jesus. Okay? All right, now back to the word of truth, amen? Uh, The word of truth in the context of Christ Jesus. People will say, "I, I, I try to 
read my Bible, but I just can't understand it, and that's their excuse. Well, look, that excuse just got thrown out the window because I'm about to tell you how to understand it. Everything in this book points to Jesus and what he did on Calvary. Before the foundation of the world, everything has pointed to what Jesus did at Calvary. Every single thing God has done is in truth. Every single thing he's done is for him to be glorified in truth and for his righteousness. Amen. The word of truth has to be in the context of the cross of, the cross of Christ. That is how it is applicable to, to me and you. That's how it is. There's no other way. If you try to read it another way, it will confuse you. The Bible will confuse you if you try to read it in any other way than it was written. People have thrown it around for years. And I'm glad that about 20 years ago, this truth started being preached again by Brother Jimmy Swaggart. We're not lifting up a man here this morning, but we're lifting up God who used that man, who gave him that message, the same one Paul did, reminded him Romans chapter 6 is for you. We're crucified with Christ. Amen. Praise the Lord. Once you understand that, a whole new world opens up. You're being used by God. Doors are open. You're being delivered. Just grab a hold of Jesus this morning. Today is the day. Just come to, come to the Lord this morning. Praise the Lord. Today is your day. We're going to suffer. Sometimes we're going to fight. It's going to be hard. But today's the day. Like I said, it really is a fight. But guess what? We're joint heirs with Christ. We're joint heirs with the guy who died for us. The perfect Lamb of God. We're joint heirs with him. The Bible tells us that. Amen. We're going to flip to Romans chapter 8 and finish this with this passage of Scripture this morning. Romans chapter 8. By the way, this isn't just a dirty napkin. This is another bookmark So that Elise made me. So don't judge my bookmarks. Praise the Lord. Anyways, Romans chapter 8. <clears throat> like I said, we're joint heirs with Christ. He's, he's made to be our Father. And I want to show you something before we quit this morning because it's about that time. I want to show you uh, a, a couple scriptures and something that I, just that I just noticed when I was studying this message. It's the first time I've ever seen it, really. I might have seen it before, but it's the first time I understood it. Romans chapter 8. Verse 14. For as many as are led by the Spirit of God, they are the sons of God. For you have not received the spirit of bondage again to fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Praise the Lord. Can we just stop right there and thank God that He's our Father? Amen. Thank God that He have, hasn't given us a spirit to fear, right. but a spirit of adoption. He's adopted us into this faith. Praise the Lord. The thing that I really never noticed before was that, you know, the Bible says in Matthew seven eleven and in Luke eleven thirteen, you know, if we being evil know how to give good gifts, how much more can he give us? Praise the Lord. How much more will God give us? And what I've never noticed is in Matthew, in the, the verse in Matthew says gifts, and the verse in Luke says if we being evil know how to give gifts, how much more will God give his spirit to us? It doesn't just say gifts there, it says spirit. God will give you his spirit to work in your life. You're not going to be alone. You're not, that's why we need to be baptized in the Holy Spirit so we can be comforted. We, we, we need to be comforted. We, we need that in our lives. We need the spirit in our lives to work in us. God said he gave it to us. I want everything God's got for me. God's offering me stuff, and I, I want every bit of it. Amen. I hope you do too. Verse 16. Wow, what a coincidence. The Spirit itself bears witness with our spirit that we are the children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God, and joint heirs with Christ, if so be that we suffer with him, that we may be also glorified together with him. This life is going to get rough. If you're a Christian, if you're living for the Lord, if you know this message, this life is still going to get tough sometimes. 
Like I said, the devil will have you pushed up against the wall. You'll be going through your own trials and tribulations. But the anchor holds, amen. Jesus will always be there. You will have to suffer in this lifetime a little bit, but nothing compared to what Jesus had to go through. But he went through that so that we could suffer with him and one day be glorified, amen. And I'm so thankful for that. Heed to what I'm saying this morning. Today's the day. If everybody is saved in here, and I believe everybody is, if everybody is saved, if there's anybody unsaved, today's your day. If there's anybody that needs a touch, don't wait any longer because today's the day, amen. Stand with me this morning.